Hello everyone, I hope you're all well. When Jason Momoa and Oscar Isaac were cast for the Dune film, people were certainly surprised at the casting, but it was done for very good reason. In this video, we'll take a look at what those reasons were. We'll take a look at Jason Momoa's career and Oscar Isaac's and look at the reasons why they were chosen for Dune. If you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon so that you can be first to be notified of new videos. Now that that is out the way, let's begin. One distinguishing feature about Jason Momoa is that he is in shape and he also has this feline quality which is associated with Duncan Idaho. It was mentioned in the Dune miniseries and it actually comes from the book. Paul studied Idaho making the feline movements, the swiftness of reflex that made him such a difficult weapons teacher to emulate. So, Jason Momoa has this feline quality, those eyes that look like a cat. I believe that that's one of the reasons why he was chosen as Duncan Idaho. At least it fits well in terms of the book. That's one point. Jason Momoa is definitely believable as a swordmaster. You only have to look at the recent series he was in, C, to see his swordmaster skills. And of course Oscar Isaac has been in Star Wars, so he's not a stranger to science fiction. And he's also been involved with films with robots and machinery, so he fits into the science fiction realm very comfortably. But he's also played very human roles too, so those performances are important. Now this part is going to contain spoilers, so if you don't want to be spoiled about Dune, the book or the movie, check out one of my other videos. Duncan Idaho doesn't have very much of a presence in the first Dune book because something happens to him. He dies pretty early on. Now someone who has read Dune and hears that Jason Momoa has been cast in Dune would immediately think that's strange because he has a small role. But the role is chivalrous and he will have a certain amount of time in the film and he will have an important role to play in terms of saving the Atreides but then he will die and that will be the end of it. Or so one might think. But if people are familiar with the other books in the Dune series, there is Dune Messiah, Children of Dune, God Emperor of Dune, Heretics of Dune, and Chapter House Dune. Again, if you do not want to be spoiled about the other books in the series, then check out another video of mine. Duncan Idaho's character actually returns in Dune Messiah as someone who isn't quite himself. He's remade by the Benet Lilacs and he is almost reborn as Duncan Idaho. So that immediately gives us the opportunity to get Jason Momoa to come back and reprise his role as Duncan Idaho in Dune Messiah. Now obviously this would be the third film newly released because there will be Dune Part 1 and Dune Part 2 and those will only be based on the first book. Dune Messiah is the second book. So whether or not they merge the Dune movie part 2 with some of Dune Messiah's storyline and bring Idaho back, that could very well be the case. That would mean that Jason Momoa would come back in Dune part 2, which would be a kind of twist, a surprise for the audience. Not only would Jason Momoa return in Dune Messiah, he would also return in Children of Dune, which is the third book. Duncan Idaho also appears in Children of Dune, so he would have quite a generous amount of screen time in a Children of Dune movie. And then after that is God Emperor of Dune. The book God Emperor of Dune features Duncan Idaho quite extensively. So Jason Momoa pretty much is the face of this Dune franchise, this new Dune plan. It's all Jason Momoa. He'll be in Dune, Part 1 and 2, possibly, Dune Messiah, Children of Dune, and God Emperor of Dune. A form of Duncan Idaho is also in Heretics of Dune, but the reason I don't mention Heretics of Dune is because the body of that child will be a young version, so it wouldn't be Jason Momoa's face. Now this is where Oscar Isaac comes into play, because there is a character called Miles Tegg, who is of the Atreides bloodline, and it is said that Miles Tegg 
this character has a likeness to the Duke Leto. The Duke Leto that we see in Dune Part 1. So, Oscar Isaac has the opportunity to be in Dune Part 1 and also Heretics of Dune if it was ever made into a movie. So he has the opportunity to return. So it's an interesting thing to think about. Jason Momoa and Oscar Isaac being the main characters to reprise their roles. Of course Helen Mohame also returns in Dune Messiah so that is an opportunity for Charlotte Rampling to return as the Reverend Mother also. So these familiar faces will make a comeback and will carry the franchise and these are not small actors, these are critically acclaimed actors who have been in successful movies. Even Stilgar has the opportunity to return. He will return in Dune Messiah and Children of Dune. And that's an opportunity for an Oscar winner to return, Javier Bardem. So these actors have been chosen, specifically keeping the franchise in mind, the potential of them returning. Now, of course, contractually, I don't think any of them have signed on to any other movies except for Dune Part 1 and 2. But the potential there, if things go well, will have these actors return in at least three other movies. Of course, Timothy Chalamet will also return in Dune, Messiah and Children of Dune, but that's where it ends. But the mantle is picked up with Jason Momoa and Oscar Isaac in the later films. So there's this line of continuity throughout the franchise. I believe that Oscar Isaac would definitely be considered to return as Miles Tegg, who looks similar to the Duke Leto. That's my personal opinion. Because Jason Momoa can't return in Heretics of Dune, they would probably ask Oscar Isaac to return as a lookalike, but as a different character completely, Miles Tegg, who is a great character, you know, a mentat, strong, clever, but older looking. So even the age would play well, even when this film is made later on into the future and Oscar Isaac ages a little, there would be no issue in him playing Miles Tegg as an older person. Miles Tegg is supposed to look like an older Duke Leto anyway by the time we come to the character in the fifth book, so it could work. So here are the reoccurring characters with the actors who would return in other films. In the Dune movie part one we will have Javier Bardem, Jason Momoa, Josh Brolin, Oscar Isaac, Timothy Chalamet, Zendaya, Rebecca Ferguson, and Charlotte Rampling. In Dune Part 2, everyone will return except Jason Momoa and Oscar Isaac, unless they show him in a flashback or a vision. In Dune Messiah, Timothy Chalamet returns as Muad'Dib, Zendaya as Cheney, Charlotte Rampling as Mohaim, Jason Momoa as Duncan Idaho and Javier Bardem as Stilgar. In Children of Dune, Zendaya returns, Timothy Chalamet, Javier Bardem, Josh Brolin and Rebecca Ferguson. In God Emperor of Dune, if there were a film to be made, there would only be one actor returning. Now because after Children of Dune there's a huge time jump, we lose all the characters and all we have remaining is the one actor who really carries the mantle which is Jason Momoa and he will be reprising his role as Duncan Idaho. Then in Heretics of Dune we will have one actor returning, Oscar Isaac, and he would play Miles Tegg. And in Chapter House Dune both Miles Tegg and Duncan Idaho are still young looking so no actor can return unless they do some CGI motion capture type scenario. So it's very interesting to think that Oscar Isaac and Jason Momoa, these two actors are really the main part of the revival plan for Dune. They are who could potentially carry this franchise and create a Dune cinematic universe. And there is even a potential for Timothy Chalamet to return in flashbacks where he can narrate some of the quotes of Muad'Dib. 
There's even a potential for Josh Brolin to return in some flashbacks where he narrates some quotes and sings some songs in other books. So these actors are carefully chosen and well chosen and I believe that they've all been picked with future films in mind. So there is a potential for these strong actors to carry this franchise into success. It's just a matter of how far they're willing to go with adapting these movies for screen. And this is all part of the Dune revival plan. So what do you guys think? Do you want to see Oscar Isaac and Jason Momoa in future films and see them carry the Dune franchise? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe and click the bell so that you can be first to be notified of new videos. Thank you and until next time, see you later.